بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وبه نستعين ثم الصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين Dear sisters and brothers, salam alaikum. I pray that you are well, inshallah. It is an honor for me to be able to speak to you one more time. It is truly an amazing opportunity that I hope, inshallah, we make the most out of it together, inshallah, with the help of God and with the blessings of the light of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. If you are ready, please recite the salawat. Inna al-Hussein, misbahu al-Huda wa safinatu al-Najah. It's beautifully written in front of me. Imam Hussein is the light, the lamp of guidance, and the ark of salvation. <clears throat> Excuse me for my voice, it'll be okay in a few minutes. This year, to be honest with you, I'm, I want to talk to you a little bit more honestly. Is that okay? I hope you don't mind it. Um, you're so precious. Your time is so precious. Your children are so precious. I don't want to waste your time. Muharram is a very special month. But there are many different levels of benefiting from the holy month of Muharram. Not everyone who enters into the holy month gets the same level of benefit. A whole world of light, knowledge, and guidance, and salvation is on offer. But it depends on how much questions you bring to the month, how much desire you bring to the month. Based on that, you will receive. If we have the best, let's say, math teacher in the world, PhD in mathematics, and we ask primary, primary school students to ask questions of math, how much can they get out of the wealth of knowledge that is in the mind of that PhD in maths? That person, that lady with a PhD in maths knows so much. But if you ask him two plus two, he can't bring all the wealth of knowledge he has into that answer. How many ways are there to say two plus two is four? Anyone can answer that and say two plus two is four. What happens to all the rest of the knowledge inside that lady's mind? Still there, waiting to be asked about. The same thing that happened to Imam Ali alayhi salam when he was sitting in a mosque and said, Saluni qabla an tafqiduni, ask before you lose me. And people started asking about things which like really did not bring the depth of knowledge that was in a, Imam Ali's heart and mind. Why is this important? Muharram is the same. Imam Hussein is the same. Muharram is the same. It says, I'm a light of guidance. So now I want to ask us, what is this guidance from Imam Hussein? It's so important though. In the first night of this series, I just want us to get a little bit more serious about what is on offer in Muharram. Ark of salvation. Allah, I want to ask you, do you feel safe? Do you feel you're okay? Does the experience of your life 
feels like you're in an ark of salvation? When think about it, ark of salvation, what does that mean? Safina to nejo. It's a huge thing. Try to picture what it means. There is an ocean, there could be a storm, it could be dark. If you run in ocean, there's nowhere you can go. How far can you swim? Even if you're the best swimmer, after half an hour, your arms get tired, your lungs get tired. You can't even see the shore of safety. And then suddenly there's an ark, a ship, that says, you don't need to try. Why are you struggling so much? Just let me help you inside the ship, inside the ark. Sit down, we'll take care of you. There's stuff on the ark, on the ship. You no longer need to swim. You're safe from the storm. The waves of the ocean won't get to you. Everything is okay. That's what Imam Hussein can feel like. But now I want to ask you, is that your experience of life? Is that our experience of life? We're inside the ship of someone who knows what they're doing and there's no waves that gets to us? Or is it that on contrary to that, we feel like there are so many waves coming at us? Is it not the case that each family right now has at least four or five areas that's worrying them? What am I going to do with these rising cost of living? What am I going to do with this issue of relationships? Isn't it true that our divorce rates are so high? Isn't it true that so many of our parents are worried about their children? Isn't it true that so many of us even here in this room are thinking of moving countries because they're worried? Isn't it true that so many of us can't understand what's happening in the world, why God is allowing all of that to happen? Isn't it not the case that so many parents are struggling to answer their questions when they ask them, Daddy, Mommy, why is this happening in the world? What does that mean? And I'm not judging us all. I'm saying there still is so much more we can benefit from Imam Hussein. We haven't even started to understand who Imam Hussein is. How do I know that? It shows. Not only it shows in our life, which I talked about, it shows even in what we think Imam Hussein did. Have you noticed when we talked about what is the message of Imam Hussein? It's so interesting. I've almost realized that you can tell me if this is true or not. For everyone, the message of Imam Hussein is the highest thing they found out in their own life. If someone loves standing against injustice, they say, oh, Imam Hussein is the one who stands against injustice. If someone, for example, feels they need strength in difficulty, they're like, yes, Imam Hussein tells me to be strong in difficulty. First, they go, they find something beautiful in life, and then like, oh, Imam Hussein must say the same thing. But if that's the case, then do we really need him anymore? Think about it. If Imam Hussein is only there to teach us to stand against injustice, hope we learned that lesson. Thank you so much. Bless you, we no longer need it. Honestly, is there anyone in the room who needs to be told we need to stand for injustice, like against injustice? If that's all Imam Hussein wanted to teach us, that message is gone. Goodbye. Another person I said, no, Imam Hussein is telling us, you need to have an attitude towards life. You see problems, you go solve it. We're like, only alone any school teacher knows that and can teach it to our children. Why do we need Imam Hussein for? And this is a very good question. Uh, honestly, why do we every year keep coming doing the same thing? Oh, no. My idea is that there is something so precious there. But in order to get to it, we need to be a little bit more serious. Please recite salawat. Oh, 
Have you ever, do you know what Torshi is? Torshi? I think the Iraqis and the Iranians know what Torshi is. For non-Iranians, we used to say what word they use for it. It's like some pickled something, pickled uh, aubergine or something. It's like a spice you have with food. Imagine you want to bring this, let's say your grandma is in Kalvamein, and you want, she's made you Torshi. You want to bring that Torshi from Kalvamein to London. What do you do? You get it in probably in a glass jar, and in order to make sure on the way it doesn't leak, what would you do with it? You wrap it so much. There's so much wrapping around it to make sure it doesn't leak. Why do you wrap something to protect it? To be able to carry it through from one country to another country. But ultimately, that wrapping at some times when you come to London needs to be opened up. Otherwise, it will always stay there. True or not? I know what I want to say is that Shia tradition is the same. Please pay attention to this very carefully. I don't think we have talked about this enough. Even the teachings of Prophet and afterwards the Ahl Bayt, they wanted to safeguard it throughout history. Why? Because it was always under attack. It was always vulnerable from day one. If you look at Lady Fatima Salamu Alaihi sermon, when is that sermon? That is so early in our history. From that time she's giving warning that the message of the Prophet is, is very, un, it may be forgotten. You come to Imam Hussein Alaihi Salam, he says the same thing. Imam Hussein literally said, religion has become what people say on their tongue. It's no longer in their heart. What is he saying? The message is about to be forgotten. You come to Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, he says the same, Imam Rida alayhi salam. Throughout history, from the very start, Shia tradition, which is, in my view, the same as Islam, it's not a separate thing, was always under attack. Even Muharram itself was under attack. There were so many people who Masana wanted to destroy the place of burial of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Isn't that true? There were so many people who didn't want that to remain in history. Isn't that true? Hope, how did our beautiful ancestors kept this Muharram and Safar alive for us? That's my question. Why did I use the example of sending Torshi from, for example, Kalvamein to London? Because think about our ancestors. They wanted to make sure they didn't even know you. Think about 400 years ago, Masalan, your great-great-grandmother, who's thinking, how can I pass the love of Imam Hussein to future generations? They had to do what? They had to wrap a layering around it. What is, think about it. If you want to pass something through one country to another country, you put bubble wrap. But if you want to pass something through history, what do you do? If you want something to remain for 200 years later, especially when it's under attack, what do you do? What is the safest thing that can protect a knowledge, a light, a tradition throughout generations? I want to think about it for a few seconds. It's emotions. It's love. That's how our grandparents, our parents taught us the love of Imam Hussein. And they themselves were taught it like that, the love of Imam Ali. It was through emotions, it was through love. From the time you're very young, they make you, for example, wear a certain type of cloth, they tape you to a setting. You see mommy has emotions, you see daddy has emotion. It's a beautiful atmosphere. It goes to such a deep corner of your heart that even if you forget everything else, that beautiful early memories you've had with Muharram will always stay with you. Isn't that true? Aren't there so many people who may have even forgotten other aspects of religion, but there's something about this love of Imam Hussein and how beautiful it was, and how beautifully it was packed that it stayed with them. So far, this is brilliant. They did an amazing job. 
they passed it on. But do you know what is the challenge that now it's time for us to do? Throughout history of our tradition, we never had the time to sit down and fully appreciate this thing that we're protecting so dearly. Our first task always was in the back of any of even our scholars was how do I protect it? Even if you look at many of our books of Kalam, theology, it's never about what we believe. It's about proving to others this is not shirk. It's about proving to others this is beautiful, this is tawheed, this is good. We're always protecting ourselves. We're, we're always saying that, no, we're not mushrik, we're not this, we're not that. There's even books by our scholars that said in our history, we have very few books who sat down just to write, this is who we are. It was always about answering others, protecting. And it made sense. It made sense. Maybe the way you commemorate Imam Ali, that is why. How, what are some of the things, for example, on a day that belongs to Imam Ali, like Eid of Ghadir, we say? We do fazail. Ali yon ma'al haq wal haq Ali. Why? Because you're try, they were trying to tell you, hold on to Ali, for example, alayhi salam. He's important. That's the job they had in their mind. Hold on to this person. Hold on to Hussein. They kept telling you fazail, they kept telling you these things. Why? Because they were like, Alan, I don't have time to explain it to you. Just hold on to this person. Don't let life separate your hand from the hand of Ali. But they never had the chance to explain to us, Ali, how does it change my life? That was a toshi that was wrapped. Now, finally, it is time, it's our responsibility now. If you think about it, our ancestors did their job so beautifully. Our fathers, our grandfathers, our great grandparents, they got the message, they lied to us. Now finally, 2024, are we ready to open this message and see what's so special about it? Are we finally ready to say thank you so much for making sure throughout 14 centuries it reached me today in London? I want to eat it now. If you told me, maybe how many generations of Shias were told Safina to Nijah, the ark of safety is Imam Hussein, but they died not feeling safe. They were, t they, told, they were told the idea that there is a ship that if you get onto, you will feel safe. But they didn't get onto it. I'm saying maybe this year, finally, it's the time. We see what's so special about this. In one day of Ghadir, I remember... I went after a reciter, a beautiful recitation that really moves you. And he was saying all the fadail of Imam Ali alayhi salam. Imam Ali this, Imam Ali's level of Iman, Imam Ali ma'al haq, Imam Ali born in there, Imam Ali that, Imam Ali this. And then he said something. We are so grateful, so lucky to follow Imam Ali. And that day I had one question I wanna ask you too. If Imam Ali is with truth and truth is with Ali, then how come someone who says, I'm following Ali, his life is not different to someone who doesn't have Ali? Is that how useless truth is? Shouldn't there be a difference in the lives of someone who says, I have Ali in my life, who is with the truth, and someone who doesn't have Ali? How come our life looks very similar? Pastor, what is the point of truth? What was the point of that truth that is with Ali? This is a question that is our responsibility now to think on. 
ببین throughout history we're always going forward now it's finally time for us to sit down and be like what is this thing we're carrying and believe me it's so beautiful you will be shocked to see how much more beautiful Imam Ali is than you can imagine you fall in love with Imam Hussein and you didn't even know how beautiful he is Allah, imagine the day you finally realize the real Hussein the full Hussein you would go crazy with love all this love you feel for Hussein is for like 5% of Hussein. Imagine when you get to the rest of him. They're so greater, so much greater. But if we want to get to that greatness, if you want to see that one person who has Ali in his life is enough to change a whole neighborhood, Believe me, one person who really has Ali can change a whole neighborhood. Do you know how many times parents tell me, Sheikh, my son, I'm worried my child will go, for example, to a certain place and there will be influence around him and my child may lose her faith or his faith. I'm like, when did we accept that faith is so vulnerable? When did we become okay with faith is something that when it meets other things, faith dies? Why can't faith be so powerful? Faith is the thing that influences others. Why are we always scared? Why can't the safety in my heart with God be so strong that my child, wherever they go, other calm down next to my child? Why can't faith do that? And it can. That's what Safina Tunneja means. Imam Hussein is saying, I can create, I can show a way of life for you that you feel so safe, so incredible in your Iman, in your contentment, in your tawakkul, in your rida, your child becomes like that. Any person coming next to your child would come down. Any person coming next to your child would fall in love with God. That's how powerful faith is. That's how powerful the way with Prophet is. Please recite the salawat. I don't know if I managed to express my point well. I'm trying to say, so far there's been a brilliant work by every organizer in the world, by every person who came to these sessions to make sure they remain alive. So up to this point, the people who came before us and there's many of you, you've done your job brilliantly. Look. Imam Hussein's name is everywhere. But now the task is different. The task is now to open and see what is this thing we're carrying with us? What is this misbahul huda? The light of guidance. What is this guidance? Can you tell five sentences even to yourself of how Hussein showed you the way? and don't end up in a cliche. The cliches are easy. Hussein taught us be strong. Hussein taught us stand against injustice. Well, you know, okay, I can show you too. Your child can show you. And then chat GPT can show you. Is that all that misbahul huda means? Or na misbahul huda means I can change your experience of life. It's very real. Allah, if we want to now start benefiting from this, if we want to go really deeper, what do we need to do? We need to open the wrapping around it. We need to control our emotions a little bit so that we can access what is the beauty inside it. Now it's that time, the tour she has arrived in London, it's on your dining table. You need to open the wraps. 
The wraps did their job. The plastic around the torshi jar did its job. The glass did not break. It's right in front of you. But you can't keep the plastic around the jar. At some point, we need to open it. What does that mean with us now? We need to, at least for half an hour, create a space where without getting scared or feeling the world is breaking, be able to think a little bit freely without getting the emotions getting to our way. What do I mean by that? Let me share a few examples of the ways in which sometimes emotion gets into the way of us really benefiting from Imam Hussein. I mean, with regards to Imam Hussein, if you really want to understand him and turn him out of a cliche that he's become right now, you need to think. There needs to be some questions. But we shut them down. Just recently, someone was telling me, he said, I no longer go to Muharram sessions. I say, why? He said, it doesn't make sense to me. Every year we go, we do the same thing. I said, okay, what happened? What was like? And I realized it all goes back to when this person was 12 years old, he had a question, and the person who was meant to teach him religion, instead of like enabling him to engage with the question, they shut the question down. What did he ask? He asked this. Isn't Imam Hussein Sayyid al Shabab Ahl al Jannah, the master of the youth of heaven? Isn't he, for example, Masalan Imam Hussein says, God, the person who has you hasn't lost anything. Ma faqadaman wajadak. So if Imam Hussein is this awesome, he has God, and God is amazing, and Imam Hussein is in heaven, and everything is amazing, why should I cry for him? It's a brilliant question the kid had. Like, engage with that question. What was, what was that child taught? Shh. You're questioning Muharram. He wasn't questioning Muharram. He just had the question. He was trying to figure out, did Imam Hussein lose or did he win? A question to you as well. Did Imam Hussein lose or did he win? Which one was it? If he lost, really, Imam Hussein is a loser? Or did he win? If he win, is it a tragedy? Is it a tragedy that's also a winning, a victory? Do you know how many of your own children, if not you yourself, have these things in your mind which are not coming too forward because maybe you never got an opportunity to discuss them? Or when you wanted to discuss them, they forced these cliche answers so much of the answers to these questions are cliches. Like a 12-year-old realizes that doesn't make sense. There's beautiful answers to all of this. But at some point, we need to start talking about them. Masa, one question I have is this. Think about it. A non-Muslim or a non-Shia person comes to one of our gatherings, looks at us for two hours and leaves, and later on they ask them, do you think this Imam Hussein, there's Masalan commemorating, did he have a good ending or a bad ending? What do you think that non-Muslim would say? And if someone doesn't listen to us, just looks at us, to them, what is Imam Hussein's message? Think about it. So, Imam Hussein alayhi salam, even at the end of, for example, Ziyarat Ashura, what do we say? Allahumma laka alhamd, hamda shakirina laka ala musabihim. And we say Imam Hussein did shukr of what happened on Ashura. Shukr, not patience, not he was okay with it. Not he went through it because shukr. What is that thing which made him do shukr? 
Does that come across to our heart? Does that come across to our children? Think about it. If a five-year-old today is with us when he goes back home or she goes back home, does Imam Hussein become a hero or a madloom? Is Imam Hussein a madloom and that's all he is? If he's a madloom, can he be a role model? I mean, these are the questions, huh? We are trying to open the wrapping to get to the bottom of this gift. And some of it may feel a little bit uncomfortable. But if you want to get on the Safina to Nijra of Imam Hussein, first we need to understand him. And believe me, I don't think we do. And that's okay. It's never too late. But inshallah, in this series, I want to present maybe another way of looking at Imam Hussein, which I think was the way we should have always looked at him. I mean, think about it. How much of our effort, Masada in Muharram, is talking about what the other sides did? Shemr did this, Omar bin Sa'ad did that. They're, they're my role models. Am I going to later on go and try to remember, Masada? I'm one day at work, I want to do something like, oh, I forgot. What did Shemr do? He's not my role model. It's not Sher, it's not Omar bin Saad. But the way we commemorate this beautiful month, the story of Imam Hussein, is like those are the main actors. That's why it becomes a tragedy, because they came and hurt and killed and stole. But my question is, if you want to change the lens of the camera, if you want to tell me, what was Hazrat Abbas doing? What was Lady Zainab doing? What was in the heart of Imam Hussein alayhi salam? Can you believe it even now, like after I don't know how many Muharram every Shia has had, sometimes when I speak about God's love, people like Sheikh, you had an easy life, which I don't, like, you have an easy life to talk about God's love. I'm like, hope Imam Hussein had an easy life. You understand? Let's say my life is easy with both of my siblings in hospital right now. But Imam Hussein had an easy life. Hope he was in love. The last sentences from Imam Hussein we have are all beautiful sentences. In one of them, he says, God, in your love, in your desire, I'm leaving everything behind. Is that a person who's sad? The enemy. Do you know who wrote the memories of Ashura? The other side. Because the ones who were with Imam Hussein all came to help. It was the other side. Or the people who were like, we're not going to take any side who wrote it down. The people who didn't even love Imam Hussein enough to go help him. Those guys wrote the story, but still, despite the fact that they didn't believe in Imam Hussein and his people around him, they even couldn't deny. And it came into their notes that as the day of Ashura went on, the faces of Imam Hussein and his companions were getting brighter and brighter and brighter. What is this thing about Imam Hussein on a day like Ashura? You're getting, your face is getting brighter. What is going through your heart that you're telling God, God, I'm in love with you. I'm leaving everything behind in love with you. This thing, what is it? How come then one problem that happened 10 years ago between a person and their father, a problem between a person and their wife, a problem between a person and their workplace, a person and their illness. How come these things bring us down? How come things, one or two issues, really ruins our taste of life? But Imam Hussein on Ashura says, I'm, I'm happy, huh? I mean, one thing which we need to shift for us, we haven't come here today to do anything for Imam Hussein. Imam Hussein doesn't need us. 
He's the one who's going to help us. And what is it going, he's going to help us with? That's my question from us. What does he have that's real? And believe me, oh, in the next few years, if you don't sort this out for yourself, believe me, slowly, slowly, your own children or even yourself will be like, what's the point of all of this? You get the world is going towards a place either you find the real Hussein or the 10% one wouldn't be enough for you. Um, the, uh, I have four minutes left, so I'm going to finish now. I just want to say one thing, inshallah, tomorrow we'll continue. The last two years, alhamdulillah, I've had the honor of um, going through so much pain. Surface of life. And for me, do you know why it was so beautiful? Because pain makes you very real. I mean, as long as you don't have pain, you're so polite. Right? A little bit of pain, you get real. That's why, masalan, some people who are in their 70s and 80s, they're so frank. They have so much ache in their body, they don't have time to like, be polite with you. They say it like it is. Sorry, I'm tired of you. I would love to leave. Why? Because there's so much ache. I don't have the energy I had in my youth to be. You know? Pain makes you very real. So the last two years, alhamdulillah, was very real. And one of the interesting things is, I was trying to see how, what is people's reaction to pain. Think about it, huh? When someone goes through so much pain, you know one of these stories that when you hear it, you're like, oh, poor thing. That's, that's the kind of pain I'm talking about. Ooh, how are they handling it? It's like too much. I mean, look around, seeing what do people offer? Do you know the highest thing I found, even in the highest people you can imagine? What was it? The best people have managed. When it comes to talking, everyone knows everything. Live in the moment, be mindful, be grateful. All of that, let me tell you, it's nonsense. Everyone, alone, we're living in a world in which everyone has the words. I know people teaching meditation courses to others. If the microphone stops working, they lose it. Everyone has words. Words are useless. The word tawakkul, without tawakkul in your heart is useless. So I was trying to see in the world what is the real thing people have. Going around saying, has anyone found real reza? I mean, reza is not like I'm going to be patient with difficulties. Reza is, I'm enjoying it. It's all a game, no one has it. But with Imam Hussein, I found it. Imam Hussein right now is one of the few places in the world where you can find a way where you don't need to be patient. Sabr is overrated. Who wants to do sabr when you can have reza? Sabr is like, God, I don't know how to deal with this, but okay. Baba Imam Hussein, as Safinat al In a Safinat al are you going to be patient or are you going to be enjoying? Hamda shakirin ala ke ala musabihe. Unfortunately, the majority of people don't have it when it comes to that reality. But I'm telling you, it's possible. It's possible for you. It's possible for your children. The way is there. They have shown us the way. But if you want to go from cliche words that won't even help you to the real light in your heart that no matter what life throws at me, I'm not just surviving. I'm enjoying. We need to go deeper in Imam Hussein's Muharram. And I promise you, it is possible, inshallah, they will show it to us and we'll continue this discussion in the next nights that we have. And I want to leave you with one thing. That moment when you finally know this beautiful gift that throughout centuries they passed on forward is finally in your heart 
is the day that you, in a very real sense, you feel fine. You feel okay. Finally, you can put the weight of life down and feel like there's someone taking care of me. Safinatun Nejan of Imam Hussein, when you get onto it, is that moment when you realize my search for God is finally over. I found my God. He's taking care of me. He's taking care of my children. He will take care of the world. We're all okay. We will be fine. This is the ship. And may inshallah God enable us to take steps towards that. Please let's join together and remember all of our loved ones who have passed away. All the people who are right now going through difficulties, whether it's an illness, any type of other difficulties. The people around the world who are going through very difficult times. Let's remember all the beautiful souls in the world and join together to recite the salawat and send that light to everyone. And with that, we'll finish, inshallah. Please recite the salawat and the surat al-fatiha.